JPA and Hibernate make it very easy to model associations between entities. You can model associations between two concrete classes or model a polymorphic association to an inheritance hierarchy. These mappings are more than sufficient for almost all of your association mappings. But sometimes you might want to model a polymorphic association to independent entity classes. Unfortunately, JPA can't model these kinds of associations without any workaround. But if you're using Hibernate, you can easily model such associations using Hibernate's proprietary Any Association mapping. Hi, I'm Torben Janssen, back with another video to show you how to build incredible efficient persistence layers with Hibernate and Spring. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell to get new videos every week. A polymorphic association mapping supported by the JPA specification requires your classes to belong to the same inheritance hierarchy. That's not the case if you're using Hibernate's Any mapping. But these classes still need to have something in common. All of them need to implement the same interface. Let's get into the IDE and take a closer look at it. In the example of this video, the interface that all entities implement is the player interface. It's a very basic interface that defines two getter methods to get the number of wins and losses of a player. The entity classes Chess Player and Monopoly Player implement the player interface. As you can see in the following code snippets, each defines its own entirely independent mapping. Using JPA standard association mappings, you could only reference each class in its own independent association mapping. Using Hibernate's proprietary any, many to any, and any meta dev annotations, you can model a polymorphic association to one or more entities that implement the same interface. If your mapping can reference different types of entities, you need more than just the primary key value to persist your association. You also need to store the type of entity you are referencing. This information is defined by a any meta def annotation that you reference in your any and many to any association mapping. Let's take a closer look at this first before we use it in different association mappings. You could apply the any meta def annotation to the attribute that references your association, but it's usually done on the class or package level. Here you can see a package info Java file that defines that mapping for an entire package. The id type attribute specifies the type of the primary key of the entity classes that are part of this mapping. The meta type and meta value attributes work together. They define how Hibernate persists the entity type that this association element represents. The meta type specifies the type of the column in which the meta values get persisted. The meta value attribute contains an array of meta value annotations. Each of these annotations specifies the mapping between an entity class and its identifier. In this example, Hibernate stores the string chess in the column player type and the value 1 in the column player ID to persist an association to a chess player entity with ID 1. Based on these definitions, you can then model your any and many to any associations. I use a any association in my player score entity, which maps the score of a chess player or monopoly player. In contrast to JPA's association mappings, an any association always requires a join column annotation. It specifies the name of the column that contains the primary key of the associated entity object. In this example, it tells Hibernate that the table player score has the column player ID, which contains the primary key value of a player. As explained earlier, you also need to reference an any meta def definition. You do that by providing the name of that definition as the value of the meta def attribute. In this mapping, I reference the any meta def with the name player. That's the one we discussed in the previous section. When you model an any association, please keep in mind that it's a to one association. Like all to one associations, it gets fetched eagerly by default. This can introduce performance issues, and you should better set the fetch type to lazy. And that's all you need to do to define your mapping. You can now use it in the same way as any other association mapping.
When you run this code, you can see in your log file that Hibernate executes one SQL select statement to get the player score. Hibernate performs a second SQL select statement to get the record from the chess player table when using the modeled association to access the player. If you want to model a to many association, you can use a many to any annotation. Here, I use that mapping to assign different types of players to a team. As you can see, the definition of such a mapping is very similar to the previous one. This association can reference multiple players. Because of that, you need to use a join table instead of a join column annotation. That table contains the meta column defined by the many to any annotation and the two foreign key columns to reference the team and the player. And you also need to reference uh, any meta def definition. We already discussed that annotation in great detail in a previous section. So I skip that here. After you define this mapping, you can use it in the same way as any other too many association. By default, all too many associations are fetched lazily. So when you get a multi game team entity from the database, Hibernate only selects the corresponding record from the multi game team table. When you then access the player's attribute for the first time, Hibernate selects the association records from the join table before it executes a SQL select statement for each player of the team. As you can see, fetching all players of a team can require a lot of statements. Because of that, this mapping is not the most efficient one. If possible, you should use a standard association mapping instead. You can use JPA standard association mappings to reference another concrete entity class or reference an inheritance hierarchy. But JPA can't model an association to multiple independent entity classes. If you need such an association, you can use Hibernate's any and many to any association mapping. It enables you to model an association to multiple entity classes that all implement the same interface. This mapping requires an additional any meta def annotation that helps Hibernate map each association entry to a specific entity class and database table. Okay, that's it for today. If you want to learn more about Hibernate, you should join the free member library. It gives you free access to a lot of member only content like cheat sheets and ebooks on how to use JPA and Hibernate more efficiently and avoid common performance pitfalls. I'll add the link to it to the video description below. And if you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below. Bye.